Art teachers, what's your draw anything you want story? Story one. I rarely let them draw whatever because they inevitably would draw predictable cliches. Eighth grade boys would draw knives with blood dripping or an eye, and girls a unicorn. Trying to get them to draw from life was tough. My freshman year, we were told to draw our fears. I drew an arm with a long slit in it, with razors falling around it, surrounded by Fs, because I was afraid of self harm and failure. There was something else, but I forgot what it was. In ninth grade, as an end of the year project, we could basically draw whatever we wanted, and we had a week to do it. Me, being the little car nerd I am, drew the entire drivetrain and suspension of a Chevy K5 Blazer. Story two. When I was in the first grade, they had everyone in every grade draw something. It could be anything. I drew an evil snail that had gotten snatched up by a bird, and I had a voice bubble that said, I will be back, or something like that, coming from this evil snail. In the foreground, I drew my family, and that was it. That was the whole picture. Flash forward to like six months, and my really bad drawing was chosen as number one in the first grade. Then the school had an assembly where they showed the top drawings from each grade, so I go up to the front with the other winners, and the principal goes through each one and says a little something about it. Eventually, they got to my drawing, and I quickly realized why I was chosen. They thought the bird was a plane, and the evil snail was my dad leaving to deploy. Important note is that this school was on a military base. My dad had never been deployed and was, in fact, depicted on the ground with the rest of my family. But I just stood there and accepted the award. And I never told another living soul because I was so embarrassed and guilty. And this guy grew up to become Pendleton Ward, creator of Adventure Time, where the little snail that's hidden in every single episode at one point becomes corrupt and possessed by the evil lich. Story 3. I've had some really funny ones, but this one is not, and reminds me whenever I think of it to consider kids' circumstances. I worked in a low-income, high-immigrant population school. This girl was amazing, outspoken, kind, great grasp of English. She drew a picture of her brother and herself. I asked her who else was in the picture, since they appeared to be part of a third person. She calmly replied, That's my brother's head. His life was ended in our village right before we went to the refugee camp. I look her up and down and say something sympathetic, masking my horror. Yeah, they came into my village, grabbed all the boys, and were going to take them away. My brother and his friend tried to run, so they cut off his head. I was standing right there. Would you like me to draw you a picture? I said no thank you. I asked where her little brother, also in art class, was when this happened. Oh, we dressed him up like a girl. He made a cute girl. I should mention before the above exchange, we were talking about One Direction or something totally banal. Story 4. I have a design your own monster Halloween lesson. Most kids draw cute ghosts or cool vampires. One seventh grader drew a sad clown hanging by a belt from a ceiling fan. He had issues. Oh man, this reminds me of a weird childhood memory. In elementary school, my mom bought this chain that hangs from the ceiling with clips on it to hang stuffed animals from. Super cool idea. Until one night I saw the shadow that it cast on my wall from the streetlight happened to look like a fat clown had hung itself. I had to explain the next morning why my response was to rip the entire chain out of my ceiling instead of rearranging things. Didn't get into trouble though. Story 5. I painted a portrait of what I thought Jesus looked like once in art class on a draw what you want day. Teacher had me back after class and asked me why I painted his hair green. That's the day I realized I was colorblind. That or he was just imagining Oompa Loompa Jesus. That's pretty impressive. I teach a world language class and we do some drawing sometimes. I give them directions like which color to draw, so and so a thing. So far, I've had two boys who are colorblind, and they just hold up a color with a questioning face like, am I close? I've learned since then that I order their markers and crayons for them in rainbow order. They're super awesome about it. Story 6. A girl, 9 years old, was doodling and looking at the drawing afterwards. I could immediately see her process. Number 1, she drew a little dancing dude, arms and legs apart. Number 2, she drew a little wiener. Number 3, she freaked out upon seeing the wiener. Her first idea to fix it had more wieners. Number four, she must have really freaked out when she saw the penis utter Frankenstein that she'd created, so she switched to a marker and drew a skirt over the wiener, added a girly hairdo to the head, and added some eyelashes. Story 7. 
In early middle school, we did a project where we used cardboard draped in colorful paper mache to make a sound word, like wham or crinkle. I was really into knights at the time, so I made the word that was the sound of someone unsheathing a sword. That word was schlong. Tangentially related, but my parents had a train set in the basement when I was a kid. There was a railroad crossing in one part of it, and I always referred to railroad crossings as ding-dings because of the sound they made. I don't remember this, but was told about it later. One time, my parents' friend came over, and I said, Want to see my ding-ding? Story 8. Not necessarily a painting, but I'm good friends with an art teacher, and she had a very challenging group to teach. We're talking about 13-year-olds that no one wants in their classroom because they keep wreaking havoc, screaming, running, full-blown issues times 10 students. She tried any stress-relieving art activities, clay, paper mache, figures, digital art. It always ended with chaos, and at least one person kicked out of the lesson. She decided to let them have fun, covered fragile places in the classroom with thin foil, gave them huge pieces of paper, paints, and told them to go wild. Use brushes, hands, feet. They can get dirty. She used paints that would wash off. To remind you, a group of 13-year-olds. She needed to stop them after 20 minutes. Two boys had a bet and one drank dirty paint water. Story 9. This reminds me of middle school days. I was the student and the teacher said, draw anything you want. So because I was lazy, I drew the basic two people standing in front of a house with the sun in the background. The fun began when my closest friend, who drew really well, took the painting and said that he would improve it. When I took my painting back, I was laughing hard. At the same time, I was panicked. He made the house a horse house, and one girl was the escort, and the other was selling condoms. They took us to the principal that day, and a few teachers were involved to resolve the case. Worth the laugh and the memories, though. Sorry about some words. English is not my first language, but hopefully you get the meaning. Story 10. Fresh out of college, I got a job working with first and second graders at an after-school program. My kids had journals that they wrote and drew in every day. Once, I had my first graders draw a picture of what they like to eat and write a sentence to go along with it. I was walking around the tables to check their work as they were finishing up and saw that one little boy drew a big brown phallic object with the word rooster written across the front. Underneath, in proud, bold letters, he had written, I like rooster. I pulled him aside and asked him to tell me about what he wrote. Coke is my favorite drink, he told me. I had to explain to him that it's very important to spell C-O-K-E, not C-O-C-K. Story 11. Not a teacher, but when I was in 7th grade, I drew a picture in my art class sketchbook of Barney and Elmo, smoking pot and drinking booze, drawn with colored pencils and all. I showed it to all my friends, and they thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. The art teacher, however, was not pleased and sent me to the principal's office. The principal then looked through my sketchbook and ripped out all the drawings she deemed as inappropriate. It shattered my soul that day, and I cried for some time afterwards. In fact, I think that's what ended my dream of becoming an artist. Screw you, Mrs. Barino and Mrs. McKeon, for robbing me of a better future. Story 12. I can honestly say I was one of the better artists at my school, asked to draw for the paper, design t-shirts, mugs, etc., and voted outstanding senior in art. I taught calligraphy, and one of my logos became the state logo for the state science division. I'm also somewhat of a smart aleck. We were assigned an exercise to draw our offhand, left if you're right-handed and vice versa. I asked the teacher, how far would you like us to draw? Her response, well, you can draw all the way up to your elbow or cut it off at the wrist. Your choice. So I drew it and cut it off at the wrist with exposed bone, tissue, and pooling blood. She was really careful with her instructions after that. Story 13. Obligatory not an art teacher, but I got a call about something like this from my kid's art teacher. She was 13 and in 8th grade art where she was told to do a pencil sketch of whatever she could think of. We had just moved, so the class had been working on this for a week, and she had about a day. The teacher made sure the kid knew she would be getting an A just for turning something in. But because it was a new school, they were not yet aware that my kid has a morbid sense of humor and a fair amount of artistic talent that she built over the years. Two days later, the art teacher called me to make sure that everything was okay with this kid because her sketch was a live hamster in an electric coffee pot. It's one of my favorite pieces of work. Story 14. In fifth grade, we were supposed to build a key holder for Mother's Day. It was a square piece of wood with three hooks at the bottom, and at the middle was a butterfly, heart of flower, 
I picked the butterfly because, eh, screw it, I guess. Then we were supposed to paint it with crayons. My house had black and white furniture. I painted it almost all black. My teacher was horrified. I guess she thought it was macabre or something. I spent the next week at the back of our class trying to mend it, paint it with other colors or something. In the end, the black butterfly still flies while it's hanging on the wall. So I suppose it went okay. Story 15. I'm an art teacher, but this story is about my substitute teacher. I asked my students what they had been drawing when I was gone. The class was absolutely silent. Apart from some boys that were giggling, they were 13 years old, I asked what was so funny, and they said the substitute was great. At the same time, the girls seemed as if they wanted to disappear from the classroom. So I asked why the teacher was great, and the boys just exploded. He told us to draw flying wieners. Well, I don't have to say more than that. Substitute teacher never comes to our school again. Story 16. High school, 1977. Not a teacher. While everyone else was drawing Pink Floyd rainbows and peace signs all over everything, the biggest burnout in the class made a wide metal bracelet with intricate triangular designs cut out of it. He turned it in and got a great grade for the first project he ever bothered finishing and some well-deserved praise for his effort. Teacher handed our work back and first thing he did was grab a pair of pliers and bent all the triangles outward, making it a thick metal spiked bracelet. I found that devilishly disturbingly clever. Story 17. Not a teacher, but in middle school we got an assignment in art class to draw a still life of fruit. I thought the idea was totally boring and decided to put a creative spin on it. I drew a bunch of different fruits all sitting in the seats of a coliseum watching an apple end the life of an orange in the center ring. I failed the assignment, and my teacher even pulled me out into the hallway to tell me directly that she didn't like me or the work that I produced. Didn't let that crush my dream, though, and I kept making my assignments weirder and weirder just to tick her off. Story 18. Former student here. We were supposed to do a bit of abstract artwork for a course assignment. My work was a framed square cutout from an old t-shirt I had previously used to help restrain an old table. Not only did I get an A on the assignment, but I entered it into a silent auction later that semester, and someone bought it. Also a former student. The 10th grade art teacher told us to draw the city 50 years from now. I drew flying buildings and she threw it back at me because flying buildings are impossible. Story 19. It's not drawing, but I gave my high school kids a poetry assignment. They could write about anything that was school appropriate and have one curse word that wasn't a slur or the F-bomb. It had to include so much figurative language, etc. Girl turns in, Ms., my name, is a witch. A poem about how she's tired of writing poems and that she's annoyed with me for assigning so many includes all requirements. I gave her a 96, a few errors, and the next poem she writes is, Ms. My Name is a Cool Witch, about how she was sorry she was mean. Story 20. Reminds me of that time I got suspended in kindergarten for drawing a poopy stick figure gun. I tried to save myself that day by saying it was a water gun, since it was so poopy you couldn't tell the difference, but they weren't having it, and little me went home that day. That's a strange thing to get detention for. Not that I particularly approve of that way of raising boys, but when I was a kid, lots of boys would play with toy guns, action man figures and stuff, and then drawing guns and scenes with fights was like a normal occurrence. Story 21. When I was in the seventh grade, our art teacher had us do whatever we wanted to be entered in the school arts sorts on a piece of construction paper. Then I tore it all to pieces and glued them all together again randomly. I called the piece Life and argued that it was supposed to represent the chaos and uncertainty that is life. It ended up winning first place in my grade's part of the art fair, and I ended up getting a cool art set. But really, it was just me being lazy and feeding some BS about a deeper meeting. Story 22. My brother and his friend were five and attended an art class. They got to draw anything they wanted. Our dog had just passed away, so my brother drew the dog with angel wings, a pretty good one for a five-year-old. The friend, who was a wild kid... The kind that always got detention later in his school years drew a large wave and people escaping it. He explained that it was the tsunami of 2004, which had just happened. The moms of the boys and the teacher were swallowing tears when they saw the drawings. Story 23. We had a substitute art teacher once and she decided to teach us about H.R. Geiger, showed us concept art from the Aliens movie and such. For homework, she asked us to look up more of his art and gave us a link to his main website. Almost every single picture on the site that she hadn't printed and shown us already was of big, weird alien robots 
penetrating woman. That was an odd assignment. Story 24. I got in trouble once for drawing a pooping butt. Little did my teacher know, but the drawing was actually a poorly drawn butterfly that ended up looking like a hairy pooping butt. And when asked why I put the details I did, like the legs and antenna and proboscidea coming off the segmented body, I said, I don't know, don't they all look like that? I saw one at recess and thought it was pretty and wanted to draw it. Thinking of the butterfly, of course. Nope, I ended up having to see the school counselor. Story 25. When I was in second grade, our teacher told us to doodle on the back of a quiz if we finished early. I decided to draw a horse high in the sky with a long staircase leading to it. To emphasize its height, I drew clouds, but it needed more. I decided to add an airplane. Later, my teacher called me to her desk, and I got in trouble because the plane looked like it was heading towards the house, and this was right after 9-11 happened. Still have no idea what I was thinking. Story 26. Parent here, not an art teacher. In kindergarten, my son came home with a packet of finished assignments he got back from the teacher. One was a paper having them draw a body part with the prompt, Here are my dot dot dot. Example given was feet. What did my kid draw? Mm, butt cheeks. Drawing of the back of a person with two giant, well drawn I might add, cheeks. My husband and I laughed our own butt cheeks off when we saw it. We kept the paper for posterity. Get it? Posterity? Story 27. Student here. My art teacher was somewhat crazy, and she left us to draw anything that we wanted, and to get 100%, all you had to do was tell her it had a deep connection to the earth, or some other nonsense. I drew a jellyfish and told her it represented wisdom because it was immortal. I like to imagine one day she'll just see a documentary on jellyfish and learn that they can't really learn or have wisdom and just have this epiphany. That kid was just making stuff up. Story 28. As an art teacher and former goth teen, nothing my kids have drawn has really shocked me. I've had to make kids change things that are inappropriate. One time, a high school girl drew a hand giving the middle finger in chalk when we were drawing outside, so we changed it to a peace sign. I did have to call home for two first graders who were drawing pooping butts while I was giving instructions. Their moms and I laughed through the entire phone call. Story 29. When I was around eight or nine, I got into drawing cars and simultaneously into drawing tribal decorations. Probably not PC, but, you know, the type a lot of people get as a tattoo. So I drew a car with tribal decal, and because of the hook-like shapes in the tribal decal, I inappropriately named the car The Hooker. When she was done laughing, my mom took the time to explain the world's oldest profession. Story 30. I used to teach painting classes at a community art center, and one day an older woman came in with her portfolio seeking a critique. It was actually a stack of landscape paintings with the Confederate flag in the sky of each one of them. At the time, I genuinely did not know what to do, so I just critiqued the technical skill of each painting and offered her advice on how to get better results. It was so awkward. Story 31. In seventh grade, we were supposed to draw a fish made out of smaller fish. A few days earlier, I had learned that seahorses are fish and was obsessed with this small tidbit of knowledge and made a seahorse out of a small fish, got into a discussion with my teacher about whether I did the assignment correctly or not. 30 minutes and a Google search later, I got a C, which, fair, I wasn't the best painter. Story 32. I was substitute teaching an art class. An eighth grader drew a picture of an adult woman molesting a child. I pulled the student aside after class and found out her aunt had been molesting her for years when she was babysat or came to visit. I reported it and her aunt ended up going to prison. Kids will sometimes draw things they wouldn't normally say out loud. Story 33. Oh, I'm not a teacher, but every year in my art class, our teacher would give the assignment to draw Santa Claus in an unexpected place. One year, my classmate drew a very realistic and very detailed picture of Santa Claus in the strip club, throwing cookies to the strippers smoking a blunt. It was good, like really, really good, but he was still suspended. Story 34. One kid had to have a meeting with the principal, her parents, and the art teacher because the art teacher decided that because this second grade girl only drew people without hands, the little girl felt powerless. All these adults question this child about the meaning of her drawings. She tells them, Hands are too hard to draw. Story 35. Not an art teacher, but when I was in late elementary, early junior high, my art teacher at the time gave us free reign. I had just learned about furries and pokemorphs, gajinkas, I think, at the time. My art teacher thankfully just thought I couldn't draw werewolves for crap. Story 36. 
I just remembered a poor little guy who drew a self-portrait. He drew with meticulous detail, and when it came down to drawing his pants, he drew the zipper so carefully, but it looked like a wiener. I was flummoxed about how to tell him that people might see something there that he didn't intend. Story 37. My art teacher literally wouldn't do this to himself. He always gives us a topic to draw about because if he says that cursed draw anything you want sentence to a class, no one would draw anything because they can't decide. Went to an all-girls school. They're very indecisive. Story 38. I think in the third grade, our teacher let us draw whatever we wanted after the whole two semesters of my friend asking and annoying her about it. We didn't know what to draw. During the class, he said something like, This was a mistake for asking. Story 39. I don't know, when I was small I remember we had to draw a popular myth in the country, so it's a little bit weird now to think that when I was younger, I drew some children eater demon thingy in kawaii anime style. Please leave your stories in the comments, I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also don't forget to like and subscribe.